The marine biome is the largest of all biomes. And this is pretty obvious because when you look at a globe, you can see that the ocean covers about three quarters of its surface. Because of water's ability to absorb a great deal of heat without changing temperature, the, this biome also has the most stable temperatures. And without contact to sunlight, deeper regions only receive indirect heating from the heated water molecules at the surface. So that means temperatures are even more stable as you um, go deeper. And the very bottommost regions of the ocean barely receive any temperature changes. The marine biome is also subdivided into different regions based on factors like the presence of sunlight, the distance from land, and water depth. And each region is inhabited by a different variety of species depending on the characteristics of that zone. So first, there are divisions by sunlight, and that creates the photic zone and the aphotic zone. And the photic zone starts at the surface of the water and penetrates as far as sunlight can go. And the aphotic zone encompasses all the water that doesn't receive any sunlight. So it's pretty um, easy to remember that all photosynthetic organisms that live in the ocean will live in the photic zone because they need the sunlight to survive. That also means that the photic zone has a higher concentration of oxygen than the aphotic zone because the photosynthetic organisms can directly breathe out oxygen into the surrounding regions. So another thing that means is that the aphotic zone doesn't have a lot of nutrients. So it depends on a lot of nutrients from the photic zone to sink down into the aphotic zone, and that's how it gets many of its nutrients. Um, and the reason why it doesn't have a lot of nutrients is because it doesn't have any plants in the aphotic zone. So the other zones are divided more specifically by depth and distance from land, and the uppermost zone is called the intertidal zone, and this begins at the high tide water mark and the low tide mark, and so this would be the intertidal zone. And this is the beach that we know, and it is inhabited by algae, sponges, clams, starfish, crabs, snails, and sea urchins. So you just remember that the organisms that you commonly see when you go to the beach are those that inhabit the intertidal zone. Um, right under the intertidal zone is the neuritic zone, so that starts at the low tide mark and goes down to the continental shelf. So this is the ocean water that we see at the beach, and it inhabits things like seaweed, crustaceans, sea urchins, and different types of fish. So there are overlaps in the species inhabiting the intertidal and neuritic zones because they're so close together. And both the intertidal and neuritic zones form the littoral zone. So under the continental shelf is the pelagic zone, and that's sometimes called open ocean. And this encompasses the entire water column, um, which you'll understand why it's only the water column once we talk about another zone. And there's a very low nutrient concentration, as we talked about, because this zone mainly consists of the aphotic zone. But there are many different types of species of um, large aquatic animals, and that would be um, things like fish, sea turtles, squids, dolphins, and other marine mammals. So the reason why the pelagic zone only encompasses the water column is because there's another zone called the benthic zone that encompasses the ocean bottom. So this is all the organisms that live, that live attached to the ocean bottom. And it, um, it also goes into the littoral zone, so it's part of um, the neurotic zone as well. And you can see in this diagram that the arrow is drawn all the way up to the low tide mark. But it's usually associated with the oceanic zone. And the oceanic zone is all the parts of the ocean that aren't part of the littoral zone. So the a uh, the sorry, the pelagic zone, and the benthic zone. And the last zone that's part of the oceanic zone that um, we haven't talked about yet is the abyssal zone. And that is the deepest most part of the ocean. And only organisms that can withstand the immense water pressures and freezing two to three degree temperatures can live down there. So as a quick summary, the marine zone, the marine biome, is the largest biome, has the most stable temperatures, and is subdivided into regions based on sunlight, distance from land, and water depth.